Hi guys, it's Isopa, and today I'm going to be talking about a really uh, interesting topic to you guys. This is a topic that I've been wanting to do for a while now, and I talk about it in some of my videos in the past and on stream. This is going to be a video about expected card values that I talk about right here. Uh, this is a very integral topic that helps us to understand pretty fundamental aspects of Clash Royale, like why some cards are good, why some cards are bad, uh, helps us understand interactions in the game, helps us understand what we should be looking for in a game to know whether or not we're ahead or behind, uh, why, some could, why some cards like excel over others, why some cards are still like kind of middle tier but not quite there yet. So EV, we're, we're just going to kind of call this EV. And this is a concept that's taken from a lot of other competitive games like poker and Pokemon, where you have hands or Pokemon that give you expected value. You know, like in poker, this hand would give you this expected value for uh, what it can win you in a game, right? In Pokemon, every every Pokemon has been like categorized so so far, and like uh, this Pokemon will usually have this amount of stats expected value in clash royale this kind of changes and expected value comes through a card's interaction and their lick it's like a duality between their card interactions and their ability to get you value with their elixir cost right um and we can draw some some conclusions after playing so many games of cr to know where these kind of cards fall in and then i'm going to try and also give you guys graphs to help you uh visualize like why a card is good why a card is bad etc etc so uh this is like here is my elixir bar right here right uh elixir is huge in clash and we're just gonna start with this say say this is like one elixir this is five elixirs this is ten elixir in between one to ten is five five is the middle ground for a lot of cards uh you have to ask yourself like what are the best cards in clash royale really and typically, the cards that are really good are going to be the cards that have low cost and that get you a lot of value. If we take a look at cards like Skeleton, for one, right? Skeleton, Ice Spirit, Ice Golem, Zap, Log. These cards have very low cost, so they, they don't cost that much to play. They don't take a lot of your resources, but they also have a high expected value of return on them and depending on your skill with them can go even higher uh if you've ever seen someone play a minion horde at the bridge and then you see another player just use skeletons and drag the minion horde all the way over that's a plus four advantage off of this one card that's cycly and just completely nullified of a, a much stronger card right and like this this is kind of prevalent through a lot of clash so one one conclusion that we can draw from this is that typically you want your cards to be lower elixir lower elixir cards have higher expected value uh so i mean then then like what's a card that's high elixir that has a high expected return on value well let's take for example the <coughs> oh where is it elite barbarians right elite barbarians have been in a lot of your guys' games and elite barbarians fall within this graph they fall at six uh the expected return on elite barbarians is very high but it's not consistent right if you play elite bars at the bridge or something and your opponent has an ice golem musketeer ice golem like anything really your elite barbarians are nullified and that huge like elixir lead that or or elixir um that you put into the elite barbs gets nullified and it's not very helpful so their expected value can be very high but because of how easily they're distracted it's not that great of a card it's good if it's like if it takes people off guard you're playing it in a smart way uh if we take if we take a look at um let's say it's a card that is deemed as pretty bad. Okay, Witch. We'll, we'll, we'll take a look at the Witch and why she's not played right now. Yes, she's middle tier. She's around 5 Elixir. 
But when you play a, when you play her, right, her expected value, how much how much do you think you really get out of the witch? Does she make up for her value every time she's played? Probably not. I think that <clears throat> her rate of damage and her uh, relative fragility is too much, and she never gets her value in play, which is why you don't see the witch played. Uh, if we and then let's take a look at like the meta cards and. Uh, I'll kind of show you why like these cards are really good and why they stood the test of time and they keep they're played like over and over and over again. So if we look at the Hog Rider, the Hog Rider falls below this line at four. And uh, let's say that the Hog Rider, so the Hog Rider one is pretty cheap, right? It's four elixir. It's a medium tanky troop that only goes for buildings. His damage is pretty high. Uh, his expected value is usually pretty high too and it can go higher and higher and higher every single time a hog rider say a hog rider gets to a tower um if he's full health his value keeps rising because his damage because like his cost is only four uh he's fast and he doesn't really impact your resources that heavily so if a hog rider gets to the tower and is able to get say two plus hits on your tower two plus hits on your tower he's already one made up his value and then he gets even more value for his cost so in this case the hog rider is a plus he his expected value goes even higher uh if we take if we reverse engineer this and we say like say a hog rider you play it and it gets completely countered by like a cannon right hog rider go, gets played into a cannon the hog rider doesn't even get a single hit on the tower gets neutralized is his expected value is negative right he doesn't make that much but he the thing about the hog rider is that playing it like that doesn't put you very very behind and it's not that big of an investment where you're going to probably lose if you do if you make an act like that which is why you see him played a lot because he's low risk but he can be high reward because his expected value is uh can go really high <clears throat> If we take a look at a card like, um, hmm, hmm, Pekka. Let's take a look at Pekka. Pekka costs seven elixir. It's one of the few, it's one of the big tanks in the game with Golem, Lava Hound. But why don't we see Pekka very much? Well, Pekka falls here at seven, right, close to ten. She takes a lot to play. Uh, her expected value, like. If she gets to a tower, even one swing on the tower is a positive for you. But it's very, very, very difficult to get her to a tower because she hits everything in her path. Um, she's also very slow, which means if, if you add that all together, she is easily distracted, easily pulled, and uh, she can be played around pretty hard. If you play her in one lane, you can just go attack the other lane, right? Uh, so if we take a look at the P.E.K.K.A., her expected value, Pekka, her expected value is usually very low. Like, her expected value, if she gets to tower, becomes high because she's, she's like, going to take her tower maybe, like, three, four swings, even. And those swings are relatively fast, but usually you'll see the Pekka not get almost anything. Usually what happens is they play Pekka, and unless you're like super ahead your pack is just going to be distracted and kited for days and you get nothing out of it uh let's see so i talk about like understanding how like how does this card get value right like is this kind of arbitrary well sort of uh it depends on like, I think there are some guidelines that a lot of people kind of confirm. Like, if a musketeer gets, like, say... So, let's say she's almost dead, right? A musketeer's played and her health is like this. Because she gets fireballed. And, but the thing is, like, through your skill, through your opponent's misplay, etc, etc. Let's say this musketeer uh, is able to lock onto a tower and get, like three plus hits because it has an ice golem in front of it right this has happened to a lot of people where they forget that the musketeer exists and they don't deal with it then the musketeer keeps hitting a tower 
we could definitely take that example and say her expected value has gone higher and she's made a positive trade. You've made a positive trade with her. Uh, if a hog rider gets to your tower and hits you two times, most likely he's already made up for his value. If a rocket uh, takes out a sparky, a the rocket has made positive value. If uh, an RG only gets one hit on a tower, was the RG really worth it? Was the six elixir to play this RG that cannot attack anything but buildings worth it? Probably not, because the person most likely defended the RG and then has a counterattack coming at you. So these things, yes, they take time to learn and they seem arbitrary, but they're really important in understanding this. Once we have this knowledge of uh, this card does this, this card does this, then we can start figuring out like whether or not we're ahead or behind. This helps us. Exp uh, this helps to. Oh. This helps us to keep in mind where we're at and what interactions we want to go through and want to not go through. If we know that a hog rider, after getting two hits on our tower, probably is a plus trade, uh, is those two hits from a hog rider plus like worth it? If it's not worth it, defend it. If it is worth it, then you better be trading that damage for something else like an elixir collector, like a huge counter push on the left side, anything like that. So to wrap, I mean to wrap up, like expected card values, it helps us to understand like our next moves, it helps us to extend understand like why these cards are being played in the meta. Uh just for a fast example, why isn't the mini P.E.K.K.A. being played right now? Well, in the past. Uh, mini P.E.K.K.A.s got insane value when you did a giant push. If someone played giant and then they dropped mini P.E.K.K.A. behind it, this mini P.E.K.K.A. had always, like, they would take care of the giant, but they wouldn't be able to take care of the mini P.E.K.K.A. because cards didn't really have that many depth that back in the day. But this mini P.E.K.K.A. got to the tower, would take a tower. His value, his expected value was very high. Nowadays, think about the cards that are in play. There are Ice Golems, there are Elite Barbarians, there are Ice Spear, there, there is um, people playing like these really cheap Cycly Elixir decks. Almost like Skarmy is in play. Almost always this Mini P.E.K.K.A. never gets to a tower. So his expected value is very, very low. Which means that if you put him in your deck, you're kind of holding yourself back. Because you're always getting probably, well, you're always most likely going to get bad Elixir trades against good opponents so there's a lot of things that can kind of go into this and i hope that this helps you <clears throat> in your games try and figure out like why you're playing these cards uh f you know for the cards not everything it kind of sounds like i'm saying like you know uh positive elixir trades but not all of this is positive elixir trades uh sometimes it's okay to throw out bad elixir trades in order to get into a good cycle or something and Expected card values sort of helps us there to understand where we're at and what we're trying to get out of our cards. If uh, if we play, I'm just gonna throw out one more example here. If it's not been enough, uh, let's say Goblin Barrel. The Goblin Barrel is thrown at a tower, right? Uh, they zap it. Okay, they got an elixir advantage because Goblin Barrel's three, zap is two. But that's not where the important play is. If you can outcycle their zap or you make them zap something else, then you guessed it, the elixir, the goblin barrel, the, elix the expected value of goblin barrel goes way through the roof because they get so much damage on the tower. That's, uh, that's where, where the importance is. People wouldn't be playing this card unless like it had the ability to do that. The reason why you see mirror furnace work is because if someone does mess up, the the value of a mere goblin barrel is so high and can take a tower so easily that you can actually build an entire deck around just like that concept itself. Okay, I think that's enough for this video. If there's anything else in the comments you want to see below, I really like this topic. I could probably go more into depth here, but I think we might be going too long. Um, yeah, just comment below. Uh, and I will try and get to you guys. If you want to see anything else, I'll be happy to do that too. Thank you for watching, and I hope it hope uh, and I hope it helps you.